Hello everyone and welcome to Dynamics Lectures. In this lecture we will derive the expressions for acceleration and angular velocity of a rigid body that rotates about fixed axis. Before I start I would like to mention the following. It took me a significant amount of time, energy and planning to create this completely free video tutorial as well as more than 300 video tutorials that you can find on my YouTube channel. And consequently, I kindly ask you to press the like and subscribe buttons. Thanks a lot. Okay, let's start. We are considering a rigid body shown over here. We assume that the rigid body rotates about the axis denoted by Z. Next, let the point A be an arbitrary point of the rigid body. Since the rigid body is rotating about the fixed axis, this point, as well as all other points of the rigid body, will describe a circular trajectory. And let's catch this circular trajectory. Here it is. The point A describes this trajectory. In my previous lecture, whose link is given in the description below this video, I derived the expressions for angular velocity and velocity of the rigid body rotating about the fixed axis. And in the sequel, I will briefly summarize the main results. First, we need to introduce the coordinate system. Here it is. Let this be x-axis and let this be y-axis z-axis is perpendicular to both x and y axis. Then, this vector pointing from O to A is denoted by R. Then, we learn that the velocity of the point A denoted by the vector V is always tangent to the circular trajectory. Also, we introduce the vector omega. The vector omega is the vector of angular velocity. Then, we also introduce the angle of rotation theta. This angle is the angle between some initial position of the point A. For example, we can assume that the point A was over here at the initial time step, and after some time, it goes over here and the angle theta is this angle over here. This is the angle theta. That's the angle that the point A describes over time. In my previous lecture, I derived the expressions for omega and v. Omega is equal to intensity omega times the unit vector k. The unit vector k is the unit vector of the z-axis. And omega is equal to actually theta dot times k, where theta dot is the first derivative of theta with respect to time. Then we have shown that velocity is actually equal to as the vector cross product of omega and this vector r. Next, starting from these two expressions, we will derive the expression for the acceleration of the point A. So let's do that. Acceleration is a vector, is the first derivative of velocity. We need to take the first derivative of this expression, omega cross r. We have d dt omega cross r plus this part over here, omega cross d dt r. The next quantity that we need to introduce is the angular acceleration 
vector. Usually, the angular acceleration vector is denoted by alpha. And it's equal to the first derivative of omega. Since d dt of omega is a vector that's actually in the direction of omega, we can write d dt of what? Omega times k. And what happens over here? k is a constant vector. Consequently, its derivative with respect to time is equal to zero. So we have only this part, omega dot times k, where omega dot is the first derivative of omega with respect to time. Now, going back to this expression over here, we obtain the following, theta two dots times k. Consequently, from this simple derivation, we conclude the following. We conclude that the angular acceleration vector is the vector that's collinear with omega, and its intensity is given by theta two dot, where theta is this angle of rotation. And we can sketch the vector alpha over here. Here it is. Now, by substituting alpha in this expression, we can finally write our acceleration vector as follows. A is equal to, this part is obviously alpha cross r plus this term over here. However, let's analyze this term over here. We have omega cross what? Let's see what's happening over here. What is d dt r? d dt r is actually velocity. That's the velocity. And we derive the expression for velocity and it's given over here. Consequently, instead of this term d dt r, we can simply write omega cross r. And this is a very important expression for the acceleration of an arbitrary point A of the rigid body rotating about the fixed axis. Next, we will give a graphical interpretation of these vectors and we will derive the mathematical expressions describing the intensities of these two vectors. First of all, let us sketch our body once again. Here it is. Here's the point O. And here's our axis of rotation. That's the z-axis. Then, here's our point A. It lies on the trajectory. And here it is. What we need over here? We need the vector r, here it is, and let this be, this point over here, that's denoted by O1, the center of the circle. This is the point O. Over here, I will simply enlarge this circle and this axis and this vector. Let's do that for clarity. Here's our trajectory. Here's our point O1. Here's our axis of rotation. Here's our point O. And here's R. Here's the point A. And let us use a different color for the axis of rotation. For example, let us use green color. This is Z. Okay. Next, let us consider this triangle O1, A, O. This angle is obviously 90 degrees. Let this angle over here be denoted by 
data. Next, let us give a graphical interpretation of the vector alpha cross r. Obviously, alpha cross r is a vector that should be perpendicular to both r and alpha. So where is alpha? We know that alpha lies on the z-axis. Consequently, this vector should be perpendicular to the plane formed by alpha and r. In fact, this vector is actually not only perpendicular to that plane, but it's also tangent to this trajectory. And here it is. I will denote this vector by at. And in fact, this vector is tangential acceleration. We learned that the tangential acceleration is actually equal to this part over here, alpha cross r. How about the intensity of the tangential acceleration? Let's analyze the intensity and let's derive the expression. The intensity of the vector is usually denoted like this, that is, as the absolute value. We have from the definition of the vector cross product, the intensity of AT is equal to the intensity of alpha times the intensity of R times the sinus of an angle between alpha and R. So what is this angle? Well, here it is. It's actually the angle beta because here is alpha and here is R. And Beta is actually the angle between alpha and r, so we write here beta. Let us simply denote the intensities as follows. Alpha times r times sinus beta. Now, what is r times sinus beta? We have r and we have sinus beta. That's the length given over here. And let's denote this length by rho. Consequently, we have that the tangential acceleration is alpha times rho. And this is a very important expression. Now, we can go one step further. The distance O1a is denoted by rho. However, we can actually introduce the vector rho. The vector rho starts from O1 and it ends at a and here it is this is the vector row by using this vector row we can write the expression for tangential acceleration a little bit different differently let's show that at can actually be written as alpha cross this vector row Let's see why we can write AT like this. First of all, AT is perpendicular to rho. This follows from the fact that AT is a tangent to the circular trajectory and the rho is actually the radius of this circular trajectory and tangent is perpendicular to the radius vector. Secondly, AT is perpendicular to the axis Z that is, it's also perpendicular to alpha. And the directions completely match according to the right-hand rule and according to the definition of the vector cross product. But how about the intensity? Let's see what is the intensity of AT. The intensity of AT is obviously the intensity of alpha, and that's simply alpha, times the intensity of rho. The intensity of rho is simply rho times the sinus of angle between alpha and rho. The angle between alpha and rho is 90 degrees. This is because this axis is actually perpendicular to the plane in which this circle, circle lies, and consequently it's perpendicular to rho, which means that alpha is perpendicular to rho and the angle is 90 degrees. And consequently we have that AT is alpha times rho. 
And that's precisely the expression given over here. Finally, we conclude that AT is equal to alpha cross R, and that's equal to alpha cross rho. This is the final expression. Okay, let's go back to our original expression for the acceleration. This part is the tangential component of the acceleration. On the other hand, this part is actually the normal acceleration. And let us in the sequel derive the expression for our an and let's give a graphical interpretation of this vector. First of all, we know that the velocity can be written as omega cross r. Consequently, an can also be written as omega cross velocity. How about the intensity of this vector? Let's see. An is equal to the intensity of omega, the intensity of v, times sinus of angle between omega and v. Let's analyze this graph. Here is omega. It lies on the z-axis. How about v? Well, v is actually tangent to our trajectory. And here it is. Now, what is the angle between v and omega? Obviously, the angle is 90 degrees. And we can write an simply as the intensity of omega, and that's simply omega, times the intensity of velocity. The intensity of velocity is actually rho times omega. And finally, we can write an, that is its intensity, as omega squared times rho. Omega squared is actually theta dot squared times rho. How about the direction of the vector an? Well, to find the direction, we need to apply the right-hand rule. If omega is in this direction and v is in this direction, and if these two vectors are actually perpendicular, an should be oriented like this. And I will deliberately expand an, since I want to make this graph as clear as possible. Okay, here is an. Now, we can actually represent an as the vector as follows, as minus omega squared times the rho vector. And since omega is equal to theta dot, we can represent this expression as theta dot squared with the minus sign times the vector rho. Let's show that. Well, what's the intensity of an? The intensity of an is the intensity of theta dot, and that's basically theta dot squared. And what's the intensity of minus rho? The intensity of minus rho is simply rho. And that's precisely this expression. Consequently, we conclude that an can be represented as minus omega square times rho. Here's the vector rho, and that's equal to minus theta dot square times rho. And finally, let us summarize everything that we learned in this video tutorial. The acceleration of the point A of the rigid body that rotates about fixed axis Z can be represented as the sum of the tangential acceleration and the normal acceleration. The tangential acceleration is tangent to the trajectory, and the trajectory is a circle. On the other hand, the normal acceleration is normal to the tangential acceleration and it's oriented toward the center of the circle. 
AT can be represented as alpha cross rho, where alpha is the angular acceleration and R is this vector, and AN is usually represented by omega cross omega cross R. Then we concluded that we can also represent the tangential acceleration as alpha cross rho, here's the vector rho, and this expression can also be represented in terms of rho as minus omega square times rho. Okay, that would be all for today. I hope that you like this video. If you like the videos I create, please press the like and subscribe buttons. Thanks a lot and have a nice day.